This off 3-3, three, three, holding short, 1-4 on Rubble. Vader 2-2, two, two, Delaram Tower continue inbound at or above 1,500, expect runway 1-4. Tower, Vader 2-2, two, two, uh, understand, expect 1-4. Vader 2-2, two, two, clear to land runway 1-4. In Afghanistan, the Taliban legitimately learned how to do air traffic control, got into our frequencies, and they were clearing people to land, take off, taxi around the airport. It was the wildest thing ever. Back in 2010, I was on something called the Marine Mobile Team. It's just a small seven-man team that's kind of like the Air Force's combat controllers, just not as badass. Essentially, we do air traffic control and a bunch of other functions. That's beside the point. We were at a place called Delaram, and it's just a small, tiny forward operating base, or a FOB for short. We didn't really have much. It was like one tiny dirt run runway and some taxiways. We didn't even have a tower, bro. We were operating in something called an RLST or a remote landing site tower. It's like a little box on top of a Humvee with some comms in it. We have a lot of equipment inside of this RLST, but I'm not going to get into all that. We're going to keep it simple. We essentially have three things, PT, CT, and frequency hopping. PT is pretty simple. It's just unencrypted transmission. So it sends a frequency out. It's not encrypted. CT, also known as crypto, is encrypted and not like the cryptocurrency. It just means encrypted communication and then frequency hopping. Frequency hopping is just like the name sounds. We just kind of bounce around different frequencies at the same time so that we all get the same message. But if you're listening to just one frequency, it's gonna sound distorted. You're only gonna hear one or two words at the time. I don't know the full details of how it works. I just know you turn it over to frequency hopping and that's it, you just start talking. So I'm up in the tower, everything is just going normal, nothing too crazy, right? And out of nowhere, I hear this random voice communication from this dude with the worst accent I've ever heard. And his communication sounded super broken. You could barely even understand him. But the craziest part is that the dude was actually using the right terminology. Like he was using the right phraseology. The aircraft that was coming in, I told him to proceed inbound at or above like 1,500 because we had some obstacles to the north. He was supposed to come in and expect to land runway 14. This is not a landing clearance. He's not cleared to land. It just means that when he's coming in, he should start lining up for runway 14. Usually they'll get the instructions later on. And an air traffic can control whenever you give certain clearances they have to read it back if they don't read that back and they're like oh roger tower maybe they just heard runway 14 this is a way for us as like a redundancy system and to make sure that everybody has the right information and they're actually following through i tell the guy to the north to come in expect runway 14 and then this voice comes over the radios and he's like Peter, two, two, clear to land runway one I'm like, hold on, who, I'm like, who is this, bro? I have never heard this dude before. He doesn't sound like anybody that I know, at least. And I'm the only air traffic controller within, I don't know, like at least 50 miles, bro. So this dude tells that aircraft to land and the pilot comes back and he's like, hey, Tower, was that for uh, Vader 22? Clear land 14. Wait, hold a minute, bro. Vader 22, that's not for you. Cancel that landing clearance. We had to get onto the frequencies and tell people there's some like false or deceptive stuff going on. You need to verify everything. And there's actually a phrase that we use in air traffic control. I've never had to use it. So I had to pull up the manual, filter through real quick in the tower. I'm like skimming the pages to figure out the right phraseology because you can't just say anything over the radios. You got to be kind of careful and still follow rules because let's say that you didn't use the right phraseology and something happened, they can look at you and say, all right, well, the book says this. You did not follow that protocol. You were at fault. That's why air traffic controllers are stressed out all the time. You have to follow things by the book or they can use it against you, especially when something bad happens. So I'm like flipping through. I'm like, oh, sh I'm like trying to get to it. And I realized I'm like, all right, there it is. And I just read it off word for word. A few minutes later, Dustoff calls the tower and he's like, hey, tower. Yeah, we heard that uh, that frequency or that communication as well. So we're going to go ahead and switch to crypto. So so now there's a whole nother issue because I have some aircraft that are going to crypto and some that are staying on PT. And just to add some context here, not every aircraft is equipped to do crypto. Most military jets and stuff like that, they have the frequency of the capabilities to go to that higher frequency, which is crypto. We do have general aviation like aircraft out there. I'm not saying that they're doing general aviation things, but that model of aircraft is not capable of going to crypto. So now I have like three or four aircraft that are not on crypto. Then I have three or four that are on crypto. I have this Taliban dude. He's just sitting in like some field somewhere on a radio telling people to land and take off and do all this crazy stuff. So 
I'm trying to figure it all out. And it's funny because the dude is almost getting confrontational on the radios and he starts saying things that are out of line for air traffic control anyway. He was getting frustrated when people were like, can you repeat your last? It's coming in broken and unreadable. Clear the land the runway. Like the dude is getting his bro. You can tell it's definitely not an air traffic controller. And I think a lot of people caught on to this quickly, but you got to understand that we had a lot of different you know, nations that are working at this airport. So we had people coming in that were from like Italy and the UK and these different forces that also have accents. So it's not unheard of to have an accent. Well, when they started talking to each other, it just got even more confusing because like the Italian dude was getting really upset because he was getting wrong instructions. And then the Taliban dude is getting angry at the line. And I'm over here trying to talk over like six different people that are all confused as to what's going on. Eventually I went on to what's called an emergency frequency or guard. And I had to do like a blanket broadcast, which just alerts everybody in the area that there's false or deceptive ATC communications and they need to verify all instructions. And it was the most confusing thing. And I'm not gonna lie, I was getting kind of frustrated and stressed out. I can't remember the exact thing that we did, but I believe I called over to one of the main bases and they gave us one of their frequencies that they weren't using. And I had everybody change over to that one. And it kind of cleared things up. A lot of people think that the Taliban aren't very smart or they're just like these dudes from a third world nation. Uh, hell no. They've been fighting for so long. They know exactly what they're doing. These dudes are freaking geniuses when it comes to warfare. I'm not saying that they're doing the right thing and they're harming, you know, innocent people. And I don't condone any of that, but you have to respect the level of intelligence and what these guys are willing to do and to go through in order to sabotage us or our communications. Like I said, it's actually pretty genius because that dude was spot on with his communications. Like he knew how to do air traffic control, but I don't even know where he was at. He could have been just outside of the fob. He could have been somewhere far away, spitting off random things he heard. I don't know. This dude legitimately disrupted our operations for at least two hours. And we had search and rescues that were coming in that we had to reroute because nobody can understand what's going on. And I had people taking off the runway that had no clearance. I had people taxing where they should not be. It was just pandemonium. So a lot of times people think that combat is all combat. Like it's all shooting and warfare and stuff. But a lot of times the enemies will use these deceptive tactics and techniques. And honestly, sometimes that's even worse. All depends on how you want to look at it. But I just want to share a real quick short story with you guys. And if you want to see more like this, let me know in the comments. Whenever you guys subscribe or you click the thumbs up or you watch channels that we're recommending like some of our playlists or something, Thing. You guys are all helping us to grow the channel and it lets us know that you like the content and it spreads it to others so that YouTube can say, hey, this guy actually makes good stuff. Let's promote him more. And in doing so, I can make more videos for you guys. It's just like a positive reward and feedback. So I hope you all did enjoy. Here's another video that I would love for you guys to check out and you're going to see it on the screen here. So until next time, see ya.